Whoa, 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 whoa. Have you hit that subscribe button? If not, what are you waiting for? Do it. Hello, one and all. Welcome back to the Total Sport channel. Here we are again. This is a bit of a different one, though. Yeah. Um, off the not cuff. quite sure what we're even calling this. Um, <laughs> literally, we just decided to press record about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, uh, unless you're living under a rather large rock, um, or you're just incredibly ignorant, or you just hate the club with the passion, like I guess quite a lot of people do. Um, because we're unbearable. Liverpool won their first league, Premier League title. Um, well, it's just their first league title. First title in 30 years. I'm not going to play into the whole, you never won a Premier League title. Neither have Man Premier United. Era. Man United have never won a Premier League. They've won a Barclays yeah, Premier so League. If we want to be picky, we can all be picky. <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously, you know, they've lifted their third, their first first division title in, in 30 years. Monumental thing. Um, How would you feel, mate? Um, wow, they're, they're clearly happy. Um, yeah. Um... That's properly rude. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, honest to God, I if you've seen some of my tweets today, um, I didn't get out of bed till three o'clock in the afternoon because um, I had a very good night last night. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was just totally unbelievable. I, I didn't think this would happen in my lifetime. Um, most Liverpool fans, my generation, think the same. Forever, we've been haunted by the slip. By last year, we missed out by one point. We always, th we always knew we would win cups. We would always win cups, but not never did we think we'd have the consistency to win this. And honestly, um, it was one of the greatest days of my life when that happened yesterday. Yeah, it's quite. Uh... It's, would you say it's bigger than Champions League? 100%. 100%. 100%. Um, the Champions League was massive and unbelievable. Again, one of the best nights of my life. Um, never did I think we'd even come close to that. But this is this is more than that. Um, it's a real proof and conclusive evidence that Liverpool have come so far. They've improved so much. Um, and it's something that w which great players, um, people like Steven Gerrard, Luis Suarez, Fernando Torres, never achieved. Um, and, and that's how big of an achievement it is. It's, it's massive. Um, and I can't believe it. Yeah, it's, uh, I imagine it still feels quite surreal at this point in time. Um, in terms of where you go next from here, you know, do, what would you ideally prefer? You know, they, they go to essentially make the same kind of run that City have. In that same sense of going, you know, back to back, or even like what United did, you know, a number of years ago at this stage, but going three in a row. I don't want to be greedy, mate. To be honest, um, <laughs> in an ideal world, we'd win every single title, every cup, all of that stuff. But I'm not greedy. Um, whatever happens, happens. We've got the best manager at the moment for the club, the best system, the best players. Um, we, we've got to build on it, of course. Um, but I've seen this club in tatters, in debt. Um, I grew up on Roy Hodgson and Kane Dalglish. Did have some good memories back then. Obviously, it's quite funny looking back and quite good looking back, realizing that when you didn't expect to win at home to like Blackburn or Stoke, um, you know, uh, the surprise of winning whenever we won. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy looking back. But I, I grew up mostly on that time um, when I started really getting into football. So I've seen this club in eighth place god knows where 15 16 we finished eighth as well um so i'm not greedy uh, if we get champions league football every year i'd want to see us win and think winning things of course i do but not honestly mate i'm not really too fussed yeah of course naturally that's uh sometimes you got to accept the realism that obviously no city finished uh, is it 23 points well they're not finished yet but as it stands 23 points behind do you feel that like they were a side that were 23 points that bad, though, in that, in that gap? Do you feel like that 23 um, points is a respectful image? No, no, not a chance. Not even close. It's, they, they haven't invested. Oh, this is very, very weird for City, but they haven't invested well, have they? I don't think. Um, where's your centre-halves? Um, Fernandinho has been playing centre-back half the season. As soon as Laporte got injured, they're done. And it's, it would be similar, actually, if Van Dijk got injured um, for Liverpool. 
uh, however much I trust in Gomez and Matip and even Lovren in that respect um, yeah they, they just missed massively and I think if Van Dijk got injured it would be a very similar story but I don't think he has he's as likely to get injured as anyone else because he's first he's built like a brick um, he is beautiful no one's touching him and the way he defends is not it's not based fully on contact um, yeah. the way he plays is not based fully on contact it's more positional awareness um, of course he heads the ball like a maniac he wins every single header but um, but yeah I, it's really not a fair representation is it I, I don't think I think Manchester City is still actually a better team than Liverpool are um, and I think it's a big 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 achievement to win over them probably the great one of the greatest if not the greatest side in Premier League history obviously you know you You've got City who will be back in a stronger sense next season. It's not just them, you know, you've got uh, Chelsea who are building a pretty respectable side in their own right. Um, and, you know, there's still the rest, you know, you don't know how Spurs could rebuild themselves under Jose. I mean, United could still have a pretty strong summer. So, do you feel that this sort of one-sided nature, the, the dominance of this title, as good as it is, um, how how much harder do you think it's going to be to retain that title next season? I don't think we will. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a negative here or not. I don't think we'll win. We'll win it again. Um, but well, who knows? Like I I just want to be proven wrong. I was proven wrong in Kiev. Like the two most important games in Jurgen Klopp's reign: four-one away at away at Tottenham, Kiev. Um, you you'll remember very well. It wasn't a great game of, of football. Course, yeah. Um, <laughs> but that that those two are the most important games, and after that, I've been proved wrong. I thought we, I I genuinely had. I ne- I I always say I never had doubt in Young Klopp. That Tottenham game, I was for about five or ten minutes. I was clop out. <laughs> five or ten minutes. I was I was there, but then I got I just calmed down, um, and then obviously everything built from there. Um, but yeah, just, all I'm going to say is prove me wrong, boys. And what do you think needs to be done to the squad to maintain that same level of consistency for the last that we've seen from the last two seasons? Obviously, last year you built up that insane points tally, only losing out by a point. Uh, carry that same momentum into this season. So naturally, obviously, you can only do that for so long before you know, inevitable burnout comes in. So where do you feel the most important areas of that team are that need additions um, going forwards? Um, what I think is that that you talked about that you can only do it for so long. Well, I never thought <laughs> this team was unbeaten and won all but one game until um, the Watford game. Watford, yeah. Like, that's crazy uh, record, you know. The, the consistency level of this team's unbelievable. So I do think there is a spe- they will go on and continue winning things. Touch wood. Um, but in terms of the squad, uh, this isn't FIFA career mode. If you are thirty, you don't die. Um, <laughs> I think. Well, James Milner's got a year left um, as a squad player, and he knows that. He's brilliant. He's done everything he wants. Lalana and Klein are going. Uh, Klein's already gone. Um, we. I, I love Nabi Keita. I think he has to make that step up next season. I think he, when he's playing, he's our best midfielder. Um, but he, if he plays regularly next season, I think that's where the big change will come in. I don't think there'll be many signings, if any, actually. Um, we've got young kids coming through who are potentially a golden generation. Um, Nico Williams. I don't know if you saw him the other night. Unbelievable uh, young right back. His only issue is Trent Alexander Arnold, um, mm. who is only 21 himself. Um, but who? What Man City spent 50 million to get a right back even half as good as Trent. So um, we've got Yasser Larucci, who's a really good left back coming through. We have got obviously Trent, uh, Kajana Hoover, another defender, Curtis Jones. Really good, brilliant, brilliant play you've seen in the FA Cup this season. Absolutely mm. destroyed Everton uh, with that with that goal. Um, so I'm not one for saying go out and buy he them, him him him. It's massively based on character. 
Okay. So for example, uh, let, let me think. We were going to sign someone. I can't remember who it is. Well, we'll we use Mamadou Sacco as an example. Okay. Mamadou Sacco at Liverpool got frozen out. Those people wonder why that is. Uh, to quote Brendan Rogers' character. Okay. So <laughs> whatever Jurgen Klopp does in the transfer market, I trust, basically. Yep, that's a fair, that's a fair comment. Obviously, he's not had many, if any, blunders really as a Liverpool, as Liverpool boss so far. Where do you think Klopp's stance all time is at the club now, post what he's done? People are saying he's in the same breath as Shankly, Paisley. No, no, he's not. Oh, he's done unbelievable. He's done brilliantly. Even the likes of Ronnie Moran, um, who was, if you don't know, he worked at the club for about 60 years. Um, I don't think Klopp is in the same breath as them, what, like what people are saying. Don't build him a statue. Like It's not, it's not like that. It's not that deep yet. Um, but <sighs> it's, he has done something which I think no Liverpool manager or no manager on this planet could do apart from him. Um, to turn this, the club round completely, not only on the pitch but off it commercially. We're now the third biggest club in the world behind Barcelona and Real Madrid, um, which is not something we would have thought when we were finishing eighth and losing 6 1 to Stoke. Um, mm. And he, he's not in the same breath as, as Dalglish, Shankly, Paisley, Moran, but he's up there. Gerard, even as well. Um, he's not in the same breath. So how far off do you think? How far off? He needs to win another yeah. bloody. He needs to win another five league titles before he's even close. <laughs> so in terms of how long, how long do you reckon he remains at the club now? He well, stated that he's got he may just actually left. retire after. Yeah. He's got four years left on his contract. He won't stay after that. Like he's not. He's not kidded us from the moment he's got in. He's been like right. I'm going to be here for my contract. Luckily, that contract's been extended. Hopefully, it'll be extended again. But you have to be wary that if you leave it, as you say, you can only do it for so long. The stress in football management is massive, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, it's, it's got four years. Um, if we pick up another two or three league titles in the Champions League or something like that and a few cups in that time, bloody hell. Like, he, he has done unbelievably whatever anyone says. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of the squad as well, obviously you mentioned the whole sort of, you don't die after you're 30, but you know, you've got the likes of Salah, Van Dijk, Henderson, you know, those guys are all heading towards that 30 barrier. Hendo they're turns that in the other day. Primes. Yeah, there you go. So, that you know, they're all in their athletic primes, so to speak. Um, in terms of succeeding them, you know, how, how long do you, I mean, Van Dijk's been pretty much injury free his entire career. Uh, same for Salah in that regard, but obviously it only takes one um, for that to change. So, you know, what do you think the immediate future holds for those kind of guys? I mean, Salah has been one of those strange ones. He's always consistently linked away, you know, to the moves abroad. It's a strange one. But do you think that's something that could, you know, occur in that um, time period? I don't know. I think Liverpool over the past... 20 years of being a selling club. Um, we've sold our best players. We've always had to because they've treated the club as a stepping stone. And fair enough. You know, um, Alonso didn't want to leave, but he left. Um, Torres, Suarez, these players who we could and should have kept hold of. Um, but they, they needed to go to further their careers. Um, do I think Salah will leave in the next two seasons? Yes, I do. Um, but that'll be purely commercial. Um, I don't want to see it happen. I love him, um, but I do think he will go purely because he may want. He might want to go and try out Spain. You know, if Real Madrid came in with two hundred million for a thirty-year-old Salah, who are we to say no? Like, mm. like, and there's plenty of players out there who can do what he and Mane do. I love Mane as well. However there's not as many who can do what Firmino does and that's going to be the one that's going to need replacing like, what, how are we going to replace that I don't know I do not know how we're going to replace it um, we'll have to change our system because the man is so crucial um, 
In terms of the midfield, you Henderson is 30, Milner's the nearly 35, Fabian Aldum's 30. Um, mm. But then you have Cater's 24, Oxley Chamberlain's just 26 or 27, uh, Fabinho's 25, 26. Um, they're all coming into their prime. They're, those will be the ones to replace those others. I think Vinaldum could stay for another five or six years. He's athletically he's brilliant. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's a difficult one because um, I really love this squad and I don't want to see it break apart, but it will. Yeah, of course, it naturally. And, you know, what do you feel towards the idea of, you know, we've seen it happen, you know, you saw Real Madrid win three Champions Leagues in a row and then that final year after that. Uh, it also like they run out of hunger or they just run out of drive at that stage. Do you feel that's a feasibility for this Liverpool squad within the next few years or so? No. Jurgen Klopp's the manager. Um, wh- wh- however long Jurgen Klopp is the manager, the club will never lose drive, hunger. Um, the club's r- steeped in history um, and they don't get that without the determination, the hunger, I don't think. Um do I think it could be a possibility for some of the players? Yes. Uh, depending on if they're the right character or not. Um, but I guarantee them. I guarantee you that all of these players will go on because it's pre- it's been proven. Kiev lost the final, won it the next year. Um, the league lost by a point last year, pissed it this year. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, that's a valid point in that regard. And in terms of, you know, those figures you mentioned there as well, where do they rank, you know, the Van, you know, the Van Dykes, the Henderson, the Salas, where do they rank in Liverpool's cult sort of uh, listing in that sense? The legends. Um, people who won in 2005 the Champions League, Jimmy Traore won a Champions League, Milan Barros, Igor Bishkan. No one has a bloody clue who these people are. They're legends. Um from Allison, who, if he stays for another five or six years, could be one of the one of, if not the best goalkeeper in our history. Van Dijk, same defend, defensive wise. Trent Alexander Arnold is going to be there for the rest of his career, unless something really bad happens. Andy Robertson, um, what can you say about him? He's just unbelievable. Henderson, if he keeps winning, he, he will go down as one of the greatest captains ever. Um, and to by the way, big, massive shout out to Jordan Henderson. Um, I'm just brilliant. And his dad sent me a video on my birthday. Big up, Brian. Cheers, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, all of these players, they've not only set themselves in the folklore, they've put it in the record books. Like, that's where it belongs, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that's a perfect place to uh, yeah, put an end to that video. I, I think that so. Video. Um, it's been it's been a pleasure talking about it, mate. Um, and when maybe when Real Madrid knock City out and win the Champions League this year, hopefully. Um, <laughs> Fingers crossed. I, beg... I mean, they looked pretty bad yesterday, so. <laughs> well, Jesus. we hope so. <laughs> we hope so. But um, yeah, thank you very much for watching Total Sport. By the way, guys, there's 85 percent of you who aren't subscribed. Um, please, if you don't subscribe, you're. There's no. What, why aren't you subscribing? You're just lazy people. Subscribe. Do it. And that, that's probably the best way to finish. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you next time. <laughs>